Have you ever found yourself in a precarious hit rate situation where the only way out was a shaky 60% hit rate on Ivy, or else you need to restart or burn a use of your Dragon Time Crystal? What about trying to mitigate your avoid and trying to bank on a 30% hit rate on enemies, but for some reason you just got hit like 3 times? Ever try stacking your critical hit rate to the high 70s only to miss and get hit back, completely ruining your strategy? What about the ultra cursed scenario where you're deep into a chapter and get critted by an enemy when their crit rate was only a measly 5 or 7%? The common theme here is that relying on shaky percentiles is all too common in Fire Emblem. Sure, there are instances where we need to rely on Lady Luck for the outcome we want, but what if I told you that there's a secret, or rather, not properly explained mechanic in Engage that would help you fix up all four of these issues? Well, here's your answer. Support boosts. Your clothes don't hang like they're weighted. Wait a minute. There's something hard under those clothes. So you did have a secret. Those are my apps. While it may seem like a, oh well, duh, support boosts, how is this a secret? Well, it's because, number one, people generally know that something is going on in combat due to the C to A bubbles floating on top of the characters, but the game doesn't really explain what they do in the moment. Number two, support boosts in this game do not behave like they did in Three Houses, and are actually closer to how they worked in the Affinity era of the GBA Intellius games. They actually work somewhat differently from those games anyway, meaning that engaged support boosts are a unique system altogether. The reason why proper setup with support boosts are so vital in engage is that the swings in hit avoid dodge and critical rates can be huge from 10 to 40 avoid 15 to 40 hit, 5 to 25 dodge, and even 3 to 30 critical. In my experience, support boosts are so underlooked that they may as well be secrets. Which is crazy, because the applications of optimal support boosts for gameplay can make or break sequences in chapters, regardless of difficulty. You've probably benefited from support boosts in combat without even realizing it. The user experience weirdly took a step back from Three Houses supports when it comes to viewing these boosts. On one hand, you can open up what support level each each character has with each other on the fly, which is nice, but you don't have any support boost notification in the combat forecast at all. You can hit the minus button to get the full stat menu on the character, then check out what rates are being boosted, but all you can tell are the boosted rates themselves not where they're coming from. You can also hit the X in the mini menu here, but again, you're not getting the information on who it's from. You instead need to make the connection that, oh, my B support with Alira is giving me 10 hit, 5 avoid, and 3 crit, but the game won't tell you about their support type, and much less how the system differs from the character-based support boosts from 3 houses. Today we find out exactly what's going on with Engage's way of supports. Spoiler warning, because supports are directly linked to characters in the game, this video will contain playable roster spoilers. If you don't care about being spoiled or already know about the cast, then keep watching. Otherwise, you have been warned. Without getting too deep into a history lesson, supports in this game work similarly to the affinity system of the GBA and Tellius games, where each affinity denoted a certain combination of stat boosts, as seen here. This system was left behind since Shadow Dragon, and ever since, support boosts were character-based rather than categorized in affinities like this. Instead of elemental affinities, Engage has very self-explanatory names for what these types of support boosts do. We have a grand total of six types, balanced, hit, critical, avoid, dodge, and default. For each type, six to seven units in the roster will have a certain one. Alir is a balanced type, meaning they provide a bit of everything to their partners. ATA is a dodge type, meaning her supports will focus mainly on dodge boosting, so on and so forth. Now I'm sure you've noticed down there, Mavir is oddly placed in the default support type. Indeed. In game, he will only provide his partners with plus 10 hit no matter the support. I genuinely think this was an oversight that has yet to be patched in game. There is no justifiable reason for him to be categorized as an NPC, so let's hope for the best that our lad Mavir gets out of default hell. So now that we can see the support bonuses on paper, how are these applied in battle? Support bonuses are triggered by standing adjacent to the partner you're trying to boost meaning the highest amount of boosts you can stack is four at once. But in practice, visually, if you surround yourself with four allies that all support you, you can only attack an enemy in range, for example. The limitation here is that not only can you only stack four boosts at once, support boosts are further separated by the fact that the character needs to be able to have supports with the other character first. Alir can, of course, support everyone, and therefore give out their balanced boosts to anyone, and receive any type back. 
A leader can also S rank anyone in the game, male or female. The other characters, like Diamant for example, is limited by their supports. If you wanted to stack as much crit on him as you could, the most you can get is 12 extra crit, alongside the other boosts those allies provide, which is still high assuming you use, say, Kagetsu, Tamera, and Alir. Evidently, this makes some characters do potentially really well with proper support support. Ivy has a pretty abysmal 30% dexterity growth as a Lindworm, which can make a lot of her hit rates on her tomes really annoyingly shaky. However, she supports with Alchrist, Zelkov, and Panet, three meta-relevant characters that can bolster her hit rate up to 60 points, which is actually huge. Even just coupling her with Alir and Zelkov boosts it by 30 points alone. Another example would be mitigating the minus dodge that some weapon engravements, like Erika's, give. Minus 20 dodge puts any user of Erika's refine at risk of crit rates floating around the low 10s, but you could patch up that dodge penalty. Someone like Linden can quite literally get to 100% crit thanks to his support boosts being rich in critical type. Boucheron and Jean give him 12 extra crit, and Alir could provide an extra 3 for 15. Some personal skills are further emphasized by how supports work too. Chloe, for example, can get an added plus 2 damage during combat on top of the plus 6 critical if Tamara is adjacent to her and a male ally. Rosado's minus 20 and Goldmary's minus 20 respective avoid and hit debuff on male enemies during combat can pair well with hit rate buffs and avoid rate buffs respectively. Finally, because of Marin's balanced typing, she can not only boost plus 5 hit and avoid to female allies within 2 spaces, but if those allies are adjacent to her, she would be giving the balanced bonuses on top of that. Finally, Lucina's skill, Dual Support, grants a bonus to avoid that increases with the unit's support level with adjacent allies, capping at 90. You can force a literal 0% hit rate really easily for someone with this skill while simultaneously stacking avoid type boosts. It's important to understand that while the potential to stack these boosted rates is there, it will be difficult to constantly trigger all three supports at any given time since it's dependent on being adjacent. That said, even small swings in these rates can make or break a round of combat. Low dex characters need hit rate boost help. Low luck and minus dodge and grave users would like the dodge rate boosts. Speedy characters would enjoy further assistance from avoid boosts, and crit rate specialists would like the crit boosts. If you find yourself in a situation where you're thinking about these exact scenarios, use the power of support boost stacking. They're in the game to make these exact kinds of differences. And that will do it for today's guide. I think support boosts are fun to plan with, and I hope that my graphic will help anyone who's looking for a quick reference to who gives what boost. If you found this guide helpful, if you learned something, or if you're feeling generous, please consider leaving a like on this video as it does help boost this video in searches and helps to show up in people's recommended tab. Let me know down below in the comments what you thought of this guide as well. And finally, if you haven't subscribed yet, but you've been seeing my content in your recommended tab for a while, please subscribe. There's more engaged guides to come soon. Thanks for watching. Deuces.